Coming up, we fly with California's Firefighting Air Force. We're about to give it away. Find out how to increase your chances of winning a hero and living history. And a way you might reduce the cost of owning an airplane. AOPA Live this week begins in just a moment. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Summer's still a month away, but it's already getting hot for CAL FIRE and their fleet of firefighting aircraft. Ten fires already this year. And with the fire danger higher than normal, officials are concerned about the upcoming Memorial Day weekend, cookouts, campfires, and all that. But CAL FIRE's unique aircraft and dedicated pilots and crews will be on alert, ready to fly if needed. AOPA Live's Josh Cochran tells us what it's like to fly with the CAL FIRE Aviation Unit. It's a fight for lives and property, using the weapons of water and retardant. The battle is against the ever-growing enemy of forest fires. In California, the CAL FIRE Aviation Program is essential for stopping fires quickly before they grow out of control. CAL FIRE has dozens of aircraft deployed across the state for a fast response every time a fire starts. Our goal is to have a, an aircraft on any fire in California within 20 minutes during fire season. And by doing that, we can get out there early and get the fires knocked down or at least slowed down and give time in those more remote areas for fire crews to get there. The fires are fought using former military aircraft. Up above the fire, the OV-10 Bronco commands the scene, directing aircraft and ground resources to contain the blaze. Down below, the S-2T drops retardant on the fire, while the UH-1H Super Huey helicopters deliver firefighters and dump water on the scene. They're mission aircraft that were designed to do similar type of work that we're doing right now. It takes a dedicated team to keep these aircraft in ideal flying condition. Much of this maintenance occurs at CAL FIRE's Aviation Management Unit in McClellan Park, California. Visitors to McClellan from the Livermore Flying will get a behind-the-scenes tour of this incredible operation. At McClellan, we have a cadre of about 90 maintenance technicians that do a variety of work, from sheet metal to painting to engine specialists to uh, structures folks. McClellan also hosts training for the tanker pilots. Jimmy Ferreira is a flight instructor and flies an S2T during the flying season. The most challenging part about this job is you're flying an airplane that's at gross weight on um, high density altitude, hot conditions and uh, you just learn to, as throughout our training, you're just taught to have the airplane is basically part of your body. There's a lot of stick and rudder skills required for this uh, type of job. The nice thing about this is there's no autopilots on these airplanes. You hand fly it all the time and it's a fun job. A lot of the people that work here, it's probably 75 to 80 percent of our pilots own their own airplanes because they have a passion for flying. And, there's nothing more that I'm more passionate about than this job here. Jimmy sees the S2T tanker as a good tool for the mission. What the best part is they have 1,650 horsepower per engine, and when you're uh, flying around the fire environment, you, know, you could bring them right back to flight idle, set your flaps, and you can really follow the contour of a lot of terrains throughout this state. And we drop at 125 knots and 150 feet, and, and you could just come right on down mountainside at 125 knots, level off, drop, and when you climb out, you have gobs of power on this thing. It'll climb out, you know, empty 3,000 feet a minute. For the Cal Fire mechanics and pilots, it's all about using aviation to make a difference. When that call comes off, we're ready to go, and you go to bed at night knowing that you saved someone's property, maybe save the house, save someone's life, and, and that's what keeps us coming back doing this job. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. As Josh mentioned, the aviation unit is headquartered at the McClellan Air Park. If you attend the AOPA Livermore Fly-In June 21st and 22nd, you can get a behind-the-scenes tour of the CAL FIRE aviation unit. You can also visit the Aerospace Museum of California. The museum has over 40 military and civilian aircraft and a world-class engine exhibit. 
After that, you can take a tour of the Coast Guard Air Station Sacramento hangars, where they operate the C-27J aircraft on patrol and search and rescue missions. Find out more information and sign up on our website. I'm always amazed at those firefighting. I know. Uh, oh. it's, it, the airspace is so complex, and the, the activity going on in the airspace right. means if you see smoke, don't, don't go near it. I know yes. it's, it's probably like a moth to a flame, but there's, <laughs> there's always a TFR, and you need to stay out of their way. Right, and that is pretty spectacular specialized flying that they're doing. They are. Incredible. Nice job. Well, our events team is just about done wrapping up from the Frederick Fly-In. Goodyear Aviation sent one pilot home a lot happier, though. Gary Smith flies a mall off a grass strip outside of Frederick. He was the winner of the Tundra Tire Sweepstakes. He's the proud new owner of these Goodyear smooth tubeless 26 inch tires and they will serve him well. Well, this is mostly recreational flying, just myself and my family. We own a small farm in Virginia, so we fly back and forth between Maryland and Virginia. Sounds like big tires would be a help there on the, on the grass. They, they would be a lot of fun. We've got a grass strip there that uh, we land at, so that's, that's the plan. If you want a chance to win, enter at each of our fly-ins this year. We'll see you in Livermore and Tullahoma. And speaking of big tires, time is drawing near to when we'll be drawing the winner of the Sweepstakes Super Cub. Sweepstakes ends May 31st. There's a ton of great features on this airplane. AOPA Online Managing Editor Alyssa Cobb shows us some of them. So a Lycoming 0320 160 horsepower engine powers our sweepstakes Super Cub and it sounds great and runs smooth, but how's it really doing? Well, we have the JPI EDM 900. It's an all-in-one engine instrument and we can tell exactly how the engine is performing. All you got to do is connect a USB drive to the JPI within a matter of seconds the information is downloaded, you can transfer it to, com to your computer and see exactly how it's performing. And let me tell you, our sweepstakes Super Cubs like homing is doing great. One of the most common questions we get about the AOPA sweepstakes Super Cub is about this thin piece of metal mounted on the rear fuselage on each side of the aircraft. And it's called a tail strake. It's part of the Vortex Generator Kit from Cub Crafters, and it helps controllability at slow speeds. It can reduce the stall speeds on airplanes that are rigged properly and operated within their envelope. I took the Super Cub on a mountain flying course in the Idaho backcountry, and let me tell you, it performs great at slow flight, and stalls are really docile. When you combine the Vortex Generator Kit with the tail strakes and other backcountry mods we've put on this airplane, let me tell you, it's a one-of-a-kind bird. There's still a chance for you to enter. If you're an AOPA member, you're already good to go, but there are ways you can increase your chances to win. If you're enrolled in our automatic annual renewal program as of May 31st, you'll get five more entries, or you can make a special contribution in support of the AOPA Aviation Advocacy Fund each donation to the AOPA Aviation Advocacy Fund provides an additional entry. You can find out more on our website. But before we give it away to a lucky pilot, we're sharing the airplane with some aviation personalities. Flight Chops and Aviation 101 had a chance to take it for a spin at our fly into Frederick. Here's a look at part of Josh Flowers' take for his Aviation Channel 101. Darren is going to take me up in the airplane and he along with his father are the skilled craftsmen that took the Super Cub and restored it to better than brand new condition for AOPA to give to a lucky member. We're about to get up in this Super Cub. Tell me a little bit about the Super Cub. You had a bit of a major hand in yeah. making it what it is now, right? Yeah. How'd that yeah. work? The original airplane is a 1954 Super yeah. Cub. Started out as a 135 horse, been modified to 160 horse. They fly really good, perform well, restored to as new condition. Somebody's gonna be really lucky. Better than new. This is the AOPA sweepstakes airplane. Is it about a month and a half out? Uh, yes. Or a month or something about like that? About a month. About a month is when this airplane is gonna be given away to a member of the Aircraft Owner and Pilots Association. We're gonna get to go fly this airplane. What are you gonna What are you gonna do? Head uh, west towards Harper's Ferry and try to find a little water to demonstrate the gear and see how the airplane performs and let you fly a little bit from the back seat. Awesome. See what you think. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited, but I've never flown a Super Cup. I've been in a J3 once.
here and we'll just see what it stalls at. <laughs> That's right, let's do it. Bring the power back. Hopefully one. A full stall. 29. 28. There it goes. There it is. Beautiful landing. I'll take it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> success. So, uh, let's turn on Echo on to, uh, parking. Right, uh, left on Echo for four-pop drive. Good stuff. Well, I appreciate the ride. You bet. Demo. Thanks for going. You can see the full video on YouTube. Just look for Aviation 101. Also, check out the video from Flight Chops on YouTube. Lots of folks were checking out the C-47s and DC-3s from the D-Day squadron during our Frederick fly-in. Those aircraft have joined the rest of the squadron and are now making their way to Duxford, England. And that's where they'll be staging with other aircraft to fly across the English Channel and drop paratroopers once again behind the beaches of Normandy. That's to commemorate the 75th anniversary of D-Day and the liberation of Europe. Last weekend, the whole squadron was in Oxford, Connecticut, where one hero from the Great War reunited with his favorite aircraft. AOPA Live's Warren Morningstar reports. One by one, the DC-3, C-47s, and C-53s rumbled off, the beginning of a long set of flights across the Atlantic to England. For some of these aircraft, it will be a homecoming. 75 years ago, they were in England, preparing for the greatest invasion in history. And 75 years ago, Lieutenant Colonel David Hamilton was about to fly into the teeth of the German war monster. We were at the tip of the spear. Yeah. Hamilton was a Pathfinder pilot, flying a C-47 with 18 paratroopers behind him. Their mission? Penetrate the enemy lines and mark the drop zones for the 13,000 paratroops that would follow behind them on D-Day. When we left England, we went over the channel at minimum altitude to get below German radar, and we flew at 50 feet above the water pulled up when we hit the German coast and made our turn in and as we were climbing up we discovered that there was a cloud bank over the area of our drop zones but we couldn't break radio silence unfortunately if we had that whole drop in Normandy would have been much bit different. Hamilton was about to rejoin his group when and my navigator said don't move you're perfect so we dropped at about 35 to 40 seconds different than the flight commander in the left wing plane and we found out later that we were within 99% perfect, all three of us, in drop zone T for tear and that was just to the west of uh, San Mary Glees and in pulling out I dropped, once we got the shroud lines in and everything, I dropped on the deck and went out my, nav my co-pilot said you better lift your right wing or you're going to take the steeple off at the church in San Maragliese. The navigator set a direct course back to England. Then we pulled up and my navigator said, Skipper, come back here a minute. So I came back and I looked at his FBI scope and you could look like you could walk from England to the coast of France. All the dots on the radar from boats. Unbelievable. And I said, wow. You started to get what the immensity of what we were involved in. So I said to my co-pilot, I said, Stan, you go back and take a look at this. We discussed it later and he said, that was our first realization of what an unbelievably large operation it was. Hamilton was home having breakfast when That's All Brother led the main force of C-47s to Normandy. There were a lot of C-47s went across D-Day. I think the figure was close to 445. C-47s led by That's All Brother. And uh, we only had 20 airplanes go in ahead of them in the Pathfinders, but we did our job and they did their job. He received four air medals for doing his job, the Order of William from Holland and the French Legion of Honor. And uh, I'm gonna wear that medal with pride over there in France. Lieutenant Colonel David Hamilton will be in Normandy for the D-Day commemoration. He's the last surviving Sir. Pathfinder. Warren Morningstar, AOPA Live. Wow. 
What a, what a remarkable thing to hear that firsthand. <laughs> it is. Guys who were actually there on that day, kind of leading leading that effort. Amazing. So you'll be heading over there, won't you, for the Yeah, Warren, Warren and I are going over. Chris Rose is going over, and uh, we'll be reporting back from there uh, that week. Uh, and so it'll be interesting to see what it is we find, but I'm, I'm sure it's going to be spectacular. Yeah, I have a colleague, Mike Ginter, who's our VP of airports, right. and he's heading over there. He's a big Warbird guy, yeah. owned a T6, and he'll be in one of the airplanes. I'm not sure which one. Yeah. Well, I'm planning to be in one of them, too, coming across <laughs> the channel. So. Great. When we come back, lighting up the map. And we take you inside one of the biggest flying clubs in the country. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Welcome back. It's severe weather season. Across much of the country, tornadoes and flooding have impacted many people, and you certainly don't want your airplane to be damaged during a severe weather event. Fortunately, forecasting has come a long way, and with the advanced warning available of impending bad weather, you may want to get your airplane out of harm's way. Moving your airplane may be covered by your insurance policy. Terry Miller, Vice President of Assured Partners Aerospace, says read your policy documents carefully. Yeah, definitely if you have questions, call your insurance broker, but your policy has all the information. So some carriers will say how far outside of the storm nautical miles, it might be 75 nautical miles or 100 nautical miles, and also how much they'll reimburse for re expenses. Um, that'll be in your policy details. Um, we suggest you read that real clear. Assured Partners Aerospace is AOPA's partner for aircraft insurance. They'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Find more information on their website. AOPA welcomed a high profile visitor this week. One of our senators from Maryland, Chris Van Hollen, came to hear from AOPA leadership about initiatives we're working on, like the You Can Fly program. The hope is to get more support from Congress to help grow the pilot population and combat the pilot shortage. Of course, the senator couldn't come to AOPA without getting a taste of aviation. He took a flight in one of AOPA's Redbird flight simulators. So he certainly enjoyed uh, flying the sim and also learning a lot about our You Can Fly program. He did. It's always good to get the folks actually from Congress yeah. actually out here to really see who we are and what we do. Right, absolutely. Well, one part of our You Can Fly program is to identify and encourage the very best flight schools and flight instructors. We think we can help the industry grow and improve by highlighting the best of the best and sharing their tools for success. And we find the best of the best with our annual AOPA flight training survey. So how does a school become eligible? And basically that's just as long as they get five or more of their clients to fill out a survey for us, um, then they get an automatic report card back from us and that lets them see here's where I'm doing really well and I want to keep doing that and here are some areas where, oh, I didn't realize I was doing that. Maybe that's some place that I can try to improve or just make better. You can enter to win some great prizes by filling out the survey. This year we've made it even more streamlined. It's quick and easy and it helps GA a lot. Find it at aopa.org slash FT survey. The survey opens June 1st. Things are looking up for the aviation industry. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association reports that airplane sales were up for the first quarter of 2019. And piston engine aircraft led the pack, up 24% compared to the first quarter of last year. Cirrus aircraft shipped the most piston engine airplanes followed closely by Technum. The legacy manufacturers Cessna and Piper shipped about the same number of aircraft, most of them destined to be trainers. Turbine aircraft were up about 7%, but rotorcraft shipments were down about 19%. Now this won't register in the gamma numbers for some time, but still a big deal for buy aerospace. Blackbird, an on-demand flying service, has agreed to buy the first 100 E-Flyer 4s and 10 E-Flyer 2s. The E-Flyers are all electric aircraft. The four-seat E-Flyer 4 will cost less than $50 an hour to operate. Blackbird will use the E-Flyers for trips between 50 and 300 miles. They say the cost will be a lot less than that of driving and a heck of a lot faster. Blackbird's first ever E-Flyer aircraft is slated to begin flight demonstrations in 2020. Before you make that next flight, you'll want an overview of the weather. AOPA technical editor Jill Tallman shows us a new product built as functional art and about the fastest overview briefing you can get. Well, Jill, for the pilot who just has to know the weather everywhere all at the same time, you've got a product. We call this a METAR map. It's uh, the, the, the inventor calls it functional aviation art, Warren. And so tell me what the lights are indicating here. Each of those lights is a separate METAR reporting station. 
And as you can imagine, each light, each color, signifies a different type of weather. So it looks like we're having a pretty good day across the United, the continental United States. Uh, green is VFR, blue is marginal VFR. We've got a little bit of IFR in different places here in Nevada for some reason, and over here and here. And I think we have, yep, yeah, no marginal V. oh no, here it is, one marginal VFR up here near Canada. And then if you have a white light, which I did, yeah, there it is, uh, that means that that station is offline for whatever reason. So how does it know what the... It uses a Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi pulls, uh, uses Wi-Fi to pull the METAR information from the internet. Mm -hmm. It updates every five minutes. And it comes in different configurations, I understand. So it's not, if you don't, if you don't want the whole United States, you can get uh, other maps. Right? That's true. Uh, you can get the East Coast, the West Coast, Florida, California, Southern California, Northern California, Texas. And if you don't happen to live in any of those states or in those parts of the country, you can request a custom METAR map with your state, and the owner will do that for you. The, the U.S. map, how much? It starts at $370, and that comes framed and in the glass like this, and it comes with the Raspberry Pi and the uh, electrical attachment. And it, it goes up in price a little bit according to what kind of frame and what kind of glass you. Yeah, it would be, be great in an FBO, wouldn't it? Absolutely, and you can get, it, uh, you can get an FBO logo added to the METAR map. Well, that's fun. Okay. Well, thank you, Jill. You're welcome. I've seen them. They're pretty nice, actually. That's fun and clever. I had not yeah, seen that before. Yeah, I like uh, that. It would be nice to have a rounded office or your you know, aviation-themed den or something like that. Absolutely. I bet yeah. they'll sell like hotcakes. Yeah, I think they will. And finally, our You Can Fly program is helping to form new flying clubs as a way up to reduce the costs of flying. AOPA technical editor Mike Collins introduces us to a flying club that has found the keys to success for a large number of pilots and aircraft owners. San Diego's largest flying club got its start when Gus Schwartz and a student wanted to lease an airplane to a flying club, but they couldn't find one that worked for them. We'll form our own flying club, so we gathered up uh, bylaws and uh, the paperwork and stuff like that, and we formed Flyers Incorporated. That was back in 79. Once with that was formed, we bought a Cessna 170, 152, brand new. Both of us flew back to Wichita, flew the airplane back. The club started with their 152 and a Cessna 182RG. We had no problem getting people that, to lease airplanes to us. So Flyers Incorporated blew to 8, 9, 10, probably 12 airplanes. Later, a separate club was started to provide high-performance aircraft. So we started the high-performance end of it, and lo and behold, uh, the high-performance pilots were wanting lower-performance airplanes for local flights. So we started leasing, Plus One started leasing more airplanes. In 1985, Plus One Flyers absorbed the original Flyers Incorporated. And it's been going ever since. We've got uh, at least 70 airplanes on, on lease back and something like 16 or 1,700 members. David Kramer found Plus One online before moving to San Diego, where he flies the KC-130 for the United States Marine Corps. When I was looking to move to the area about in uh, November, I was looking for places in the San Diego area that provide an opportunity to uh, you know, rent aircraft at a reasonable rate to, to really maximize uh, what my dollar is going to get me uh, flying time wise. And so I came across uh, Plus One Flyers uh, via just an internet search. I got checked out uh, two weeks ago in the 172 here and uh, looking forward to building uh, a lot of uh, GA proficiency in the 172 while working my way up uh, and eventually you know, mastering the techniques required for a 182, 210, and uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, this, this, this Sirius SR22 here. A flying club can be advantageous to aircraft owners as well as pilots. One of the greatest things about Plus One is that you can afford to buy an airplane that you might not be able to afford otherwise. And I'm a perfect example because I bought a Cirrus, a brand new 2003 Cirrus that I had no business owning except that when I was able to lease it back to Plus One and lease it out, then it was affordable. And the numbers are pretty crazy when you look at the hourly rate for owning your own airplane. I'm able to own and fly my Cirrus, and um, the other people in the club can fly my Cirrus too. And I don't mind sharing it because I get to own a Cirrus. The large fleet allows considerable diversity, including high-performance singles, twins, and even aerobatic aircraft. 
about two years ago, I bought uh, a Great Lakes sport trainer, and I put it into Plus One Flyers, and from there, it, it got following very quickly. Uh, and since then, we've gathered a small club within the club, concentrated around Great Lakes and around uh, aerobatics and around aerobatic competition and uh, open cockpit flying and tailwheel flying. Mike Collins, AOPA Live. You can read more about the Plus One Flyers in the June issue of AOPA Pilot Magazine. It's a great way to get really cost-effective flying out of a flying club. It is. And if you want to find a flying club, we have a flying club finder on our website in the You Can Fly area. Just enter your zip code or airport identifier and it'll find flying clubs around you so you can go check them out. Good advice. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for watching. And remember, we like hearing from you. Our email address, live at aopa.org. And we talked a lot this show about the 75th anniversary of D-Day, and hopefully on this Memorial Day weekend, we'll all take a moment to remember the heroes that, that Absolutely. went before us. Yeah. And please share this with anyone you know who loves aviation. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you back here again next Thursday for another edition of AOPA Live This Week. The people of AOPA's Legal Services Plan work to help protect your certificates, and they love to fly as much as you do. The AOPA Legal Services Plan is offered as part of our Pilot Protection Services. It's a members-only benefit provided to thousands of pilots like you.